The Education of Oath by Brian Evanson. Ulf was, he reluctantly admitted to himself, a better researcher than a mage. His practical magic was rudimentary at best, and he almost never inscribed a rune properly. But perhaps that would come with time. Until it did, he tried to keep his head down in Polarian classes, not drawing too much attention to himself, making himself useful by mucking out the stables taking on the other menial tasks that nobody wanted to do. Meanwhile, he studied desperately, hoping for a breakthrough. He could only escape notice for so long. Soon, one of his docents, florid-faced dwarven artificer named Thranigeld, singled him out after class. You're no good at magic, Ulf he said in his gravelly voice. I'm sorry, sir, said Ulf. No good at artificing, either. Ulf just nodded. What are you good at? I don't know, sir. Why are you here? I want to be a mage, sir. Don't you think the agricultural program would be a better fit for you? I hear you're an apt hand in the stables. I came here to be a mage, Ulf said stubbornly. His father had been opposed to it, had wanted Ulf to stay and inherit the farm. His mother might have encouraged it if she'd been around. Rumor was that there was magic on her side of the family. He died when he was young. It had been an uphill battle all the way. Dwarf's eyes narrowed. He took a strange lamp from the table, swung it up, shined it into Ulf's eyes. Ulf blinked, turned away. When the dwarf turned the lamp off, his expression had softened. I worried you might be one of them, but no, that's good. One of who, sir? A Phyrexian agent. When Ulf looked blank, he continued, Denizens of the Machine Hells, who hope to make our plane their own. They pass as human, but they're hideous mixes of flesh and machine. They are long to destroy all we hold dear. Here in Latinam? In the Academy? The dwarf nodded. They're everywhere. As for you, let's start with what you're good at. Research. You can do that, I grant you. Let's have a sedil. who can keep coming to class, but you'll do a little research for me on the side. It seemed an ordinary enough quest. Alf had heard the other students talking. More than a few had been assigned some extra task by one of the docents. Thranigeld's class was on the ancient world, on what the world had been before the Rift Era. Each student had been given a project to research, which meant Ulf had his regular assigned topic on the Silex Blast that he would have to report on in the class. But now, he also had another special project. Corondor, Renegeld growled. Let's see how good a researcher you are, boy. Find out whatever you can. Not the usual. Side tunnel. And when Ulf turned to go, no need to discuss this with your fellow students. When researching the Silex Blast, he found himself in the same section of the library as the other students, poring over the well-thumbed collection of books students had been using to write up the same assignments for years. This quickly gave him enough for his report, though he also tracked down a book or two farther afield gave a little more. Details that he imagined hadn't appeared in students' papers before. Researching Corridor was harder. In the section where he had first found information on the Silex Blast, there was very little. Only bland details. The agreed-upon stories that every child knew. Even when he extended his search, it wasn't much. 
on a lower shelf where relevant texts were meant to be housed, there was only a blank gap. The books were missing, and there was no clear record who had them. Misplaced, maybe? Was there more to it than that? Or, perhaps, it was some sort of test. Perhaps Thranigeld had hidden the books himself, was waiting to see what Ulf would do. For the next few weeks, Ulf spent every spare moment in the library. He went shelf to shelf, scanning the titles, reshelving books that were out of place. First, there were no sign of the missing volumes. Later, he wondered if they had ever existed. Eventually, he found himself away from the main stacks, in side chambers that smelled dark and musty, where scrolls and tomes were piled rather than shelved. None of these touched on Corridor in more than a cursory way. And then, in a forgotten corner of one of these side chambers, he saw where a stack had tipped over and spilled some books down against the wall. Among them was an old and mildewed volume, its cover torn away. He picked it up and wiped the grime from it, saw round circles of mold what remained of the title page, so obscuring it, it was impossible. Are these circles of mold? Wondered, tracing them with his fingertips. Could they be worn or broken runes? He opened the book and saw it was written in a stilted script and an old Vidalian. Couldn't make some of the words out. They were unfamiliar and arcane. The language was so evasive and unclear that he was unsure if he was interpreting it correctly. But it seemed to refer to a figure of myth. Solkanar, the demon king of Orondor. Solkanar was once a marrow sorcerer, a forest guardian, until he was cursed planeswalker Gaedron Dehada. As Dahada's demonic servant, Sol Kanar had wielded legendary Blackblade against Dakon himself, as well Karth the Lion, the founder of House Carthalian. The book detailed the curse, and a variety of ways the curse could be lifted, one of which was through Dahada's death. He smiled. House Carthalian were the rightful rulers for Andor. But the kingdom had been usurped by Solkanar some time ago. The details of his true history, even how to break his curse, would be very valuable to anyone looking to free Corondor. This find would impress Thranigel. He'd have to admit Ulf had really discovered something. All he had to do was sort out what it actually was he found. Write up his research, then Thranigeld would recognize he belonged here. Smile faltered. What if this was all nonsense? Surely it was truly an important tome, or surely if it was a truly important tome, it would have been preserved with more care. What if this book was a mere child's tale, or a fantasy? Or seeing Thranigeld, he'd have to get a second. Ulf knocked on the door to Silas Broughton's chamber. Broughton only taught the advanced students. He was an esteemed author, a specialist in Old Vodalian, as well as the time period in which the book had been written. For a long moment, there was no answer. Ulf was lifting his hand to knock again when he heard Broughton clear his throat and say softly, Yes? Ulf opened the door, stepped inside. Broughton sat in an overstuffed chair, an old scroll open in his lap, a pipe resting on a pewter plate on the table just beside. For a moment, he looked puzzled, and then his face cleared. Ah, the stable boy. Not, my, not bad news about my steed, I hope. Ulf blushed. Ah, no, sir. 
I have a question. Rotten rolled the scroll up and set it down. I hadn't realized you were a student as well. Said, agricultural program? Uh, no, sir. Then I'm studying magic. Rotten raised him up. I suppose I can spare you a few minutes. He gestured to a chair. Please sit. I've found something, said Ulf, and thrust the book at him. Rotten took the book lazily, thumbed through it, reading a few words. Suddenly, the tension changed. He sat up, turned back the pages, began to read from the beginning. He glanced at Ulf. Where did you come across this? He asked. When he admitted that he had found it in the library, Rotten's gaze sharpened. What were you looking for that caused you to find this? I'm on a project for my docent, said Ulf. Which docent would that be? Ranigeld, sir. Ah, the dwarven artifice. His first year report. Not exactly, said Ulf, but hesitated to go on. It's all right, said Broughton smoothly. You didn't tell me. After all, I'm a docent. A special project, sir, admitted Ulf. He sent me to research Corridor. Broughton nodded. Well, this is quite a find. In fact, it might be best... Leave it here with me. Ulf hesitated and shook his head. I don't think I can, sir. No? I should seem... I should show it to my docent first. For a moment, Rotten held on to the book, staring at his hands. Then he handed it back. Do you wish? He said. He turned away, seemingly bored, disinterested. I'll leave you to see yourself out. Ranigeld's hands shook as he held the book. Do you know how... Uh, what the heck was his voice? Uh, I've lost the voice already. You know how long this has been lost? Where in hell did you find it? Peered at Ulf closely. Beginning to think there's more to you it's the eye. What are you going to do with it? Me? <laughs> Nothing. Wouldn't be wise for me to keep it since I didn't do the finding. Rules of the mine. You dig it up, you keep it. Oh, not just keep it. Stash it somewhere safe. Where? Renegeld shook his head. You decide. But don't tell me. Don't tell anyone here. Don't tell anyone. Have it. Baffled, Wolf agreed. He took the book and turned to go, then turned back. Sir, isn't this exactly the kind of knowledge we should share? Well, yes, said Thranigeld. In principle, at least. He patted Ulf on the arm. We'll share it, he said. I'll write to a friend to set things in motion. When the time's right, and when we're sure of who our friends are, we'll share it. In the stables, on the wall where he kept the shovels and rakes he used to clean the stalls, was a little inset cubby. He wrapped the book in oilcloth and secured it there, under a double handful of straw. He continued to act as normal, returning to the library. He looked for more books on Corundor, but without any real success. A few days later, coming back in the evening from... Another futile expedition, he found the door to his room ajar. Looking more closely, he saw the door frame was cracked, the lock forced. He paused and listened. He heard no sound. At this time of night, all three of his roommates were usually there. He cautiously pushed the door wider. He first saw pages strewn all over the floor, 
then bedding scattered and torn apart as well. The closet was open, its contents spilled out. Had one of his fellow students practiced a spell that had gone awry? Drawn awry? Hello? He started to say, but once he opened the door wider, he fell silent. The far end of the room spattered blood. What he saw next made him feel like his own heart stopped beating. One of his roommates was lying there, cuts on his arms, throat slit. Another lay turned to face the wall in a pool of his own blood. The third he didn't see until he came a little farther in, but he was the worst of all. He had been dismembered. The pieces of him piled in a careful stack near the wall. He fled. The book was still there, still safe. But how long would it be so? No. Whether Thranigeld wanted to keep, wanted to take it or not, he had to give it to him. He would tell him what happened. Together, they would figure out what to do. He walked back from the stables with the oilcloth-wrapped book clutched to his chest. He kept his head down, trying to look inconspicuous. Enough students were still out, laughing and talking, that he probably didn't seem too out of place. Still, felt like a target. As soon as he was inside, he made a beeline for Docent Thranigeld's chambers. He rushed in without knocking. Thranigeld was at his desk, but with his chair turned around, facing the window. Sir, he said. Sir, they're dead. All of them. The book's not safe. We have to... Trailed off. Thranigeld had not turned the sound of his words. He hadn't even moved. Sir? Wolf's throat felt tight. Forward slowly and stepped behind the desk. Another step. Another until he was directly behind his teacher, and then he reached out, shook his shoulder. For an instant, nothing happened. And then the dwarf twilt tilted and slid from the chair. And turned him face up. Up, Wolf saw his face was bone white, etched with terror. Whatever had happened to him did not see death. Where can I go? He wondered. And then he told himself, I just have to keep moving while I think it through. He had to talk to someone. Had to figure out what to do quickly. He didn't soon be dead as well. He made his way to a bathroom and locked himself in. He stayed there, breathing deeply, trying to calm down. Eventually, his hand stopped shaking. He tucked the book into the pocket of his robe, where it would be out of sight. He could take the book and run. Where would he go? Who could he take it to? Another academy here? Should he stay here and give it to the Archmage? What if he went to the Archmage's quarters and found him dead too? No. Better to just leave while he still could. And again... He left, wouldn't he be blamed for the murders? Didn't know what to do, didn't know at all. He did someone to talk to another person to help him sort it out. What is it, my rustic scholar? asked Broughton. And then he looked closer, Wolf. Face creased with concern. What's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. He, he, he's dead, said Ulf. They all are. He's dead. Slow down, stable boy. Stop speaking nonsense. Ulf explained in bits and pieces what happened. 
Slowly, Broughton managed to put it together. I don't know what to do. All finished. Broughton up. Paced around his study, thinking. My best advice, finally said slowly, would be to get rid of the book. That's obviously what they're after. But why? Why do they want it? And who are they? Hope you never have to learn the answers to those questions. You're young and untrained and hardly in a position to protect the book. And then as if he had just thought of it. It would be safest, perhaps, if you were to leave the book with me. Almost by reflex, Ulf began to reach for the pocket of his robe. He was so used to listening to his docents, to obeying them, that it was hard not to. Halfway there, his hand stopped. Hesitated. Do you have the book with you? Prompted Broughton. Or will you have to lead me to it? Just an instant, Ulf saw naked desire in Broughton's face. I... said Ulf... I've got to... And he began backing slowly toward the door. Before he reached it, a transformation began. Broughton's face lost all expression. A bloody line suddenly tracing its way from the center of his forehead down through his chin. With a wet sound, his face split and slopped to either side over his shoulders like a mantle, revealing a bundle of cables in place of a neck and a skull of acid-etched metal. His eyes were possessed of an unearthly light. Orexian, Ulfri, or he had gone to exactly the wrong person. He had walked straight into evil's maw. Broughton stood there. A mix of blood and black oil beaded on his skull. The only casual tore the loose flesh that had been his face away and let it fall to the floor. His voice spoke. It was different. Cruel, mechanical. Every shred of human warmth bled out of it. Give me book. Snarl. Now! We need some spookier music. It should do. <laughs> He managed on his way out to slam the door behind him, the latch just catching as Broughton sprang forward. He heard the man howl of irritation as he thumped against the closed door. Ulf scurried like a rat down the hallway. A moment later, the door exploded as Broughton burst through without bothering to open it. Give it up now, boy! If you do, perhaps I'll let you live. Ulf sped around the corner, zigzagging between a pair of startled students. A moment later, he heard them gasp in horror. He turned and saw one attempt to hurl a bolt of energy at the creature that had been brought in. Struck him in the chest, leaving a gaping hole in the flesh that it revealed a network of antenna-like wires writhing beneath. One of them whipped out in a flash and darted deep into the student's eye and out the back of his skull. Seeming tried to run. Rotten was quickly upon her, blades suddenly flicking from his fingers. And then Ulf was around a corner again. From a distance, he heard the student's high pitched scream and then abruptly cut off. 
cut through a classroom and out its back door, then climbed the stairs quickly, two steps at a time. Poppy held his breath, to... but almost immediately heard heavy footsteps. Rotten must somehow be tracking him, or perhaps Ulf simply hadn't been as crafty as he had believed. He rushed down the hall and toward a oblivious student, a second year he vaguely knew. Run! shouted Ulf. The student just stood there, frozen. She'll be killed, thought Ulf. He rushed past. He realized the student was weeping black tears. Oil. The student threw herself at him. Ulf desperately dodged and continued running. Help! he shouted. Help! The student with oily tears was gaining, and Broughton was close behind. Ulf helped this, felt the student's hands grasp his robe, and he turned long enough to lash out. Krypton went down. Ulf dodged left and then right, put on a little burst of speed, and then turned right again. Only to realize the hallway terminated at a dead end. He tried to turn back, but it was too late. She was blocking his. Later, Rotten arrived as. Stable boy! Rotten, Ulf slowly back. Was there a way out? His mind raced as he tried to figure out what he could possibly do. I'll give you a choice. I'm a kind man, even if, technically, I am more than a man. He stepped forward. Either you can give up the book and die a clean, simple death, or you can refuse and be torn painfully apart. Yep. By the way, you die. The second death I guarantee will be decidedly more painful. Take another step, and I'll destroy the book, said Ulf. Brought me. Smiled, though on his metal face, a smile looked like a rictus pain. Perhaps that's precisely what we intend to do with it ourselves. Rotten took another step. Give me the book. No! Said Ulf. He closed his eyes and waited for the end to come. But the end did not. Instead, with a crash, the wall beside him burst apart. Dust and smoke filled the air, and through it appeared a hulking creature. Humanoid, but not human. He had the skin and scales of a lizard and the appearance of a dinosaur, a Viachino. Run, he said to Alf. Find him. I'll hold them back as long as I can. Find who? asked Alf. The Viachino had turned away. Glaring at Broughton, he hissed and sprang forward. Stepped between him and Broughton, and with a bellow, the Viachino bellowed. No! Screamed Broughton to the student. Keep with the book! Don't lose the fool! Injured, leaking oil from one side now, the student struggled to her feet. Run! The Viachino shouted again, and this time, Ulf did. It was better, he decided, to hide, and to hide in the place he knew best, the library. He wound his way through the stacks, passing a startled librarian, and rushed into the older, more poorly illuminated section. He slowed, began to walk quietly. Could he hide in the side room where he'd found the book? Risky. Might have mentioned it to Broughton. Somewhere else, then. And then he remembered the lower shelf that had been emptied of books on Corondor. He strode quickly there. Was there room enough to squeeze in? Yes. If he pushed some books down, moved a few elsewhere, 
It was small. There was just enough space for him to crawl in. He would be invisible to anybody, not on hands and knees. Maybe that would be enough. He lay there waiting, trying to breathe softly. How would he know when it was safe to come out? Surely by now others had noticed the disruption and were hurrying to defend the school from the Phyrexians. Unless, thought Elf, Ulf, they're all Phyrexians. No, he couldn't think like that. That was paranoid. He had to trust there was someone still human out. He heard a noise in the stacks an aisle or two away. Silent. Is he visible at all? No. He was okay. Nobody walking by would see him. He would be safe. Footsteps returned. And then returned, slowly growing stronger. They were in his aisle now. He felt his breath. The noise grew louder and louder. And then he saw a set of legs pass a few inches before his face. And you on. Quietly exhaled. Relaxed. Then he heard the footsteps. A moment later, the student's oil-stained face was right there, staring at him. Matted now through her hair. Or, uh, Matted now through her hair were the strands of cables that had forced their way out of her skin. Give me the book! The girl hit. The girl started to reach out and then suddenly reared up her face, vanishing. Another pair of legs was there. Student cried out. Her head fell to the floor and bounced, no longer attached. A few seconds later, her body followed, collapsing in a mass of flesh and wire. Ulf gaped. Quickly, he scrambled out, standing over the body of the student. It was a grizzled man. He had long brown hair streaked through with gray, his wrists wrapped in leather cuffs. He was strong, bulking, and carried in one hand a sword that was meant for two. A swirling and fiery energy enwrapped the blade, from which dripped the oil once hidden inside the student's flesh. It sizzled, strange man. The man turned toward him, and Ulf saw on his right cheek, just below his eye, the mark of the Elder Druid. That rare mark of distinction that Ulf thought he would never see. He had read about it in, uh, he had read about it in searching researching Corridor, knew it was given only to a chosen few. The only person he knew with such a mark, who looked like this and who carried a sword such as this, had been seen for many years. Couldn't be. Thank you, Ulf managed. There was a hint of sadness in his expression. He was an innocent his voice. She was an innocent. She probably didn't even know what they'd implanted in her. Who are you? asked Ulf. What? said the man. And then he came out of his reverie, came gruff and ready. I'm your rescuer. He wiped his sword clean on the dead girl's robes and sheathed it. And then he roughly grabbed hold of Ulf. Hey! What are you doing? It off. Shut up and hold still, said the man. Rapidly, he ran his hands through Ulf's hair, patting down his shoulders, his sides, his arms, his legs. When he let go, he was holding what looked like a small metallic burr. I thought so. He dropped the burr to the ground and crushed it. Tracker, they'll have a hard time finding you now. Grabbing Ulf by the arm, he propelled him forward. Get moving, he said. We need to get out of here before it's too late. The man led him slowly through the stacks. You have it, right? Have what? 
The book. Why do you think you're we're here? It's smart to admit he had it. Shouldn't he be cautious? I know where it is. Do you want it? Want it? No, you keep it. I need to have my hands free, he said and drew his sword. It looked terribly sharp. A student near the reference desk gave a yelp and sped away. Besides, they'll target whoever has the book. So what say we let you hold on to it? Um, thanks, said Ulf. Nobody was at the reference desk. Nearing the library door, the man waved to Ulf to stay back. He lay down on his belly and peered at the crack. Five sets of... Five sets of... Got back. Waiting for us. What do we do? Asked Ulf. <laughs> what do you think? We kill them. I don't know how to kill anybody. The man looked him up and down. Of course you don't. Don't worry. You'll learn. The Phyrexian sleeper agent waited. Cables and metalwork sprouting from their bodies. One of them an elf student, asked the one who had been his docent, Are you sure he's in there? That's where he was with Drakkers. Do we really need to wait for Silas? said another. Nobody moved. Is there another way out of the library? asked the elf. No, said the former docent. I'm sure of it. They're trapped. And that was when the wall to one side of them exploded. Flames were everywhere. The whole corridor ignited. And three of the five were knocked off their feet. The other two rushed to the hole, weapons drawn. A moment later, they fell back, dead, stabbed, and lay smoking. Moaning, the remaining three got to their feet. I don't think we should look in the hole, the elf said. Let's wait agreed the docent. Yes. Let's, said a deep voice behind them. They spun around to find a man, his blade pulsing with flame behind them. Fumbled for their weapons, but the man's spell was already cast, and the whole corridor ignited. For a moment, they thrashed around on fire, screaming, and then they fell silent. Come on, shouted the man. He headed down the other corridor. The fire behind them, Ulf saw, was out of control, beginning to spread. Shouldn't we try to put it out? Ulf asked. The man shook his head. We need a good distraction. They hurried along the halls, dodging into classrooms at any sign of someone approaching. Once, through a half-opened door, Ulf saw a creature that never could have been human. Its body oddly gapped and rearranged. So tall its head scraped the ceiling. The man waited until it passed, then rattled the door handle from in the corridor outside, heard the creature stop, grunt. When it returned to open the door, the man cut its arm off, then stabbed the blade deep into its core and twisted. It collapsed in a shower of sparks and smoke. They came across a stretch of broken and scorched hallway, the remnants of the battle. There, amid everything, lay the Viashino who had saved Ulf. He was dead, his belly slid open. The man stood solemnly. You fought honorably, old friend. I promise you, it will not be in vain. entrance hall wasn't sight. We're almost safe, Ulf thought. He started toward it, but the man grabbed his arm, stopped him. No. Too easy. Something's wrong. Instead, he opened a nearby classroom door and entered. 
He returned a moment later, carrying a desk. One handed, he tossed it into the space near the exit. As soon as it touched the ground, it was sliced through with a dozen blades reduced to flinders. A few stray blades ricocheted off the walls and came their way. As Ulf cowered, the man batted them easily aside with his sword. Told you. So how do we get out? Asked Ulf, rising again. Shrugged. Runes discharged. It's fine now. He looked at Ulf. Can't you feel it? When Ulf shook his head, the man narrowed his eyes. You really don't have much magical ability, do you? Are you sure you belong in a magic program at a Talarian Academy? I, I'm a good researcher. He watched the man's hand come around to rest on his sword's pommel. If you're one of those damned sleeper agents, I'll personally make sure you're cut into more bits than that desk was. Tell me the truth. Why are you really here? I... I think they wanted someone to clean out the state. Relax. Makes sense. Last thing most mages want is to get their hands dirty. They made their way through the door into the vestibule, only to find someone awaiting them. Silas Broughton commands. I can't say I'm surprised. Take the book, but let the boy go. Jared Carthalian. And with a shock, Alf realized he had been right. Can it be? I don't care about the book or the boy now that you're here. You were always the prize, Carthalian. And now, I don't need any help finding you. Jared cast Ulf a quick glance, and Ulf saw something different. A measure of curiosity. You can't have the boy, and you can't have me, Jared said. And he drew his sword. Ulf watched Jared's sword flash, watched, too, Broughton's shoulders bristle as sudden internal armor thrust to the surface. Broughton touched his chest, and a long, curved, barbed slice of metal suddenly jutted out. He closed his hand over it, wrenched it free, he continued to unfold and articulate to become a barbed, ornate sword. He fought back. Forth. Jared the superior fighter, but Broughton just able to hold his own and, because of his machine components, not grow tired. They circled one another warily and then closed, Carthalian uttering a fierce battle cry as he rushed forward, driving Broughton back toward the wall. Adam man, was forcing his advantage when Ulf saw something strange. Broughton's thigh had begun to split open. His leg! Ulf called. And Jared had enough presence of mind to leap back just as a circular metal blade spun out of the leg, traveling at immense speed. The slice the end of Jared's thigh, had he not leapt back, would have cut him in half. Jared pressed his hand to the wound to staunch the blood, and suddenly, Broughton was pressing his advantage, forcing him back. Wolf kept expecting to see Jared go down, but the man fought on. Would be wiser here to flee. But he had helped save Jared once. If he left, who would save him the next time? Another flurry of attacks and counterattacks made clear that even with blood coursing down his thigh, Jared was still the more skillful fighter. Broughton cursed and brought his blade down hard, an attack Jared blocked by bringing his up with just as much force. Broughton's blade shattered and Jared drove his sword past the guard of the broken blade and into Broughton's chest. Stumbling, coughing oil, Broughton collapsed face down. Still breathing hard, Jared rolled him over with his boot and bent down over him. Why did Shaldred send you here? 
Groton bubbling. Who are the other agents at the school? Who else has already been completed? Why would I tell you that? Does it go all the way to the Archmage? Is he himself corrupted? He's as human as you, Carthalian. There are plenty of reasons to choose the winning side. Rotten reached toward him, but Jared idly batted his hand away. Dada. Dada knows that too. She's waiting for you, Jared. Return to her. And then he grinned, showing oil-soaked artificial teeth, and died. At last, Ulf approached, staring at the remnants of the being who had tried to destroy him. He looked now like little more than a broken machine. Jared had torn a strip from Broughton's clothing, was using it to bind his thigh. The blood had already begun to soak through. Where are we going? Ulf asked. We are not going anywhere. Sounded tired. You will take the book to safety. Bring it to Corridor. There are still good people there. I'll meet you there. He gestured behind him. My work is back inside. I need to save those who are still human and kill those who aren't. He looked at Ulf. Stay away from main roads and show this book to nobody. For a moment, they stood staring at one another. And then Ulf nodded. Thank you. Jared answered with a simple nod back. And then he turned and limped back into the now ruined academy. Ulf took a deep breath, and then he stepped through the gates and out into the world. Deep within the Latnam Academy, behind the locked doors of his quarters, the Archman gave a malicious smile. He shivered all over and slowly began to change, his stout body growing thinner, stretching, rearranging, until it had become the body of a gray-skinned woman, or at least the body of a woman on top. Below, tentacles curled and writhing along the floor. Yes, he said. How lucky you found the book, Jared. Once you played the hero here, yet again, Horndor will be waiting for you.